lesson, we're going to introduce a new market structure. We'll be talking about perfect monopoly or pure monopoly. A purely monopolistic market structure exists when there is a single seller. In other words, the market for a good is dominated by one firm. Finally, the demand for the good in the entire market is the demand for the individual firm's output. These characteristics of pure monopoly will be very important when we begin our analysis of this market structure today. So before we can illustrate the amount of output that a monopolist will wish to produce and show the area of economic profits a monopolist might enjoy, we first must derive a demand curve for a monopolist's products. So in our graph on the left, we're going to be examining the market for airplanes. Now we're making some assumptions here. We're assuming that the airplane market is a pure monopoly. In reality, of course, there are several companies that manufacture airplanes, but we are hypothetically referring to a purely monopolistic monopoly market here in which there is only one firm supplying airplanes to the entire industry, and they are considering producing up to six airplanes and charging prices ranging from zero dollars to sixty million dollars as we can see on our vertical axis here. So let's move over to our demand schedule on the right. A demand schedule shows the relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded by consumers for that good. We've got a range of quantities here ranging from six to one airplane. Let's now think about the relationship that will exist between the quantity demanded and the price of airplanes that the monopolist attempts to charge. So earlier in the course we learned the law of demand, which stated that there is an inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded. A monopolist can expect to sell more airplanes at lower prices while at higher prices sell fewer airplanes. So we're going to assume that there is an inverse relationship between the price of airplanes in the market dominated by one monopolistic firm and the quantity demanded. So at higher prices, let's say at $60 million, the monopolist should only expect to sell one airplane. However, by lowering its price to $50 million, the quantity demanded among airlines, the buyers of airplanes, will increase to two. And as the price of airplanes continues to fall, the quantity demanded will continue to rise. At $10 million, this monopolist could expect to sell six airplanes. Now, this is all very hypothetical, but it's not unrealistic to assume that as the price of airplanes falls, more airplanes will be demanded by the consumers of airplanes. So we can plot the monopolist's demand curve by plotting the points from the demand schedule in the graph on the left. So at $60 million, this firm and the industry as a whole can expect to sell only one airplane. But as the price of airplanes falls to 50, the quantity demanded will increase to two airplanes and so on. We clearly have a linear relationship here between the price and the quantity demanded for airplanes. At $10 million, six airplanes will be demanded. If we connect the dots, what we'll have is the monopolist's demand curve and, in fact, the industry demand curve for airplanes since the monopolist is the only producer of airplanes. We're going to label this curve demand for airplanes. Now the first thing we should notice in a monopolistic market compared to a perfectly competitive market which we have already studied the demand for an individual firm's output is downward sloping. That's an important characteristic of a monopolistic market. The individual firm's demand is downward sloping. This means that the firm has some price making power. By which I mean if the firm wished to raise its price all it would have to do is reduce its output and it could charge a higher price for its product. However if the firm wished to lower its price it could do so by increasing its output since in order to sell the additional output it would have to lower its price. So we can say that purely monopolistic firms are price makers in contrast to perfect competition in which individual firms face a horizontal or perfectly elastic demand curve, meaning that pure competitors are price takers. They cannot control the price of their own output since they must accept the price determined in the market. But since a monopolist is the market, in other words, there are no competitors, 
the monopolist determines the price that it sells its output for. As the price changes, the quantity demanded will change based on the market demand for its product. So the next question we want to ask is, how will a monopolist know what the profit maximizing quantity to produce at is? Before we can determine where the monopolist should produce, we should review the profit maximization rule learned earlier in the course. In order to maximize profits, a firm should produce where its marginal cost equals the marginal revenue for its product. The profit maximization rule says produce where MR equals MC. Now looking at our graph, we can see that there is no marginal revenue curve, nor is there a marginal cost curve. In our previous market structure, perfect competition, we saw that demand corresponded with the marginal revenue of individual firms, since the firm can sell as much output as it wished at the given equilibrium price. Therefore, the equilibrium price was the marginal revenue. However, in pure monopoly, demand is not equal to marginal revenue. Because of the very nature of this market structure, marginal revenue will always be less than the price the firm can sell its product for. To illustrate why, let's look back at our table here on the right. We can find the total revenue at any level of output by multiplying the price times the quantity at that level of output. And once we know total revenue, we can find the marginal revenue, which is simply the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. So let's start by finding total revenue at each of the levels of output ranging from one airplane to six airplanes. Total revenue is just price times quantity. So the total revenue of the first airplane at $60 million is $60 million. It's the price that the firm sold the airplane for. At the second airplane, the total revenue increases to $100 million, $50 million times the two airplanes sold. I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of this column now. Notice that as the firm increased its output from one to six airplanes, total revenue increased at first from $60 million to $120 million, but beyond the fourth airplane, total revenue began to decrease back down to $60 million. This firm would clearly not wish to produce six airplanes since its total revenue of producing six airplanes would be less than if it produced only three or four or even five airplanes. Now marginal revenue is what we're really interested in here because knowing the marginal revenue will allow us to determine the profit maximizing quantity that the firm will wish to produce at. Marginal revenue is just the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. In this case the change in quantity is always one airplane so marginal revenue will just be the change in the total revenue. As we went from zero to one airplanes, the marginal revenue equaled the price of the first airplane, $60 million. But then marginal revenue began to decrease more rapidly than the price decreases. The marginal revenue of the third plane is only $20 million. And for the fourth plane, there is no change in total revenue. So marginal revenue is zero. Then marginal revenue becomes negative. And ultimately marginal revenue will be negative $40 million for the last airplane. By increasing its output from five to six airplanes, this monopolistic seller's total revenue fell by $40 million. Not a good idea to increase output to six airplanes. If we plot the points from this marginal revenue table, we will have the marginal revenue curve. The first unit of output marginal revenue equals the price, but as output increases, marginal revenue falls more rapidly than price. At the fourth unit of output, the marginal revenue is equal to zero, and then marginal revenue becomes negative beyond that. If we connect these points from our marginal revenue table, we will have our marginal revenue curve, which as you can see lies below the demand curve. There's our marginal revenue curve for this airplane manufacturer. Now we have half of what we need in order to determine the profit maximizing quantity. All we must do now is add some cost curves to this graph. Now a firm in pure monopoly will face the same sorts of costs that a firm in perfect competition will. Marginal cost, average total cost, and average variable cost. For our sake, we're only going to bother drawing the marginal cost and the average total cost curve here because that's all we need to determine whether or not a monopolist will be earning economic profits or losses or breaking even. Notice the relationship between the marginal and average total cost curve. Just like in perfect competition, marginal cost will intersect ATC at its lowest point. Now that we have our marginal cost and our marginal revenue curve, we can determine the profit maximizing level of output for the monopolist. 
In our graph, we see that marginal cost and marginal revenue intersect just around three airplanes. If we draw our dotted line up, we can see that at an output of three, the price that the firm can sell for is around $40 million. So the equilibrium price in this market will be around $40 million, and the firm's average total cost lies below the price at around $30 million. Our monopolist in this airplane industry will want to produce three airplanes and sell them at a price of $40 million each. At this quantity and price combination, our monopolist is earning economic profits equal to the yellow rectangle. In our study of perfect competition, we recognized that any time economic profits exist, firms will enter the market, the price of the good will fall, and those economic profits will be eliminated in the long run, as the firms are forced to produce at their minimum average total cost in order to remain competitive in the market. Will this happen in our monopolistic market? We need to go back to our characteristics of pure monopoly in order to determine whether or not this firm's profits will be eliminated due to the entrance of new firms. In fact, one of the most important characteristics of pure monopoly is that there are high barriers to entry. This means that economic profits can be earned in the long run. It is very difficult for new firms to enter this market due to the barriers to entry. In our airplane market, one of the more significant barriers to entry is probably economies of scale. An airplane manufacturer in the real world, such as Boeing or Airbus, has achieved many economies of scale that new potential competitors will not be able to achieve at a low cost. Therefore, the profits earned by real airplane manufacturers or other firms in monopolistic or nearly monopolistic markets are likely to persist in the long run as long as demand for their product remains stable or high. If demand for airplanes falls, then yes, these profits might be reduced or even eliminated. However, assuming demand for airplanes remains constant, monopolists can expect to earn economic profits in the long run. So these profits that we have drawn here will persist in the long run as long as the firm's costs do not increase or the demand for the firm's product does not decrease. But one thing we should notice about pure monopoly is that the quantity produced by a monopolistic firm and therefore in a monopolistic market is less than that which would be produced under perfect competition. Under perfect competition, the price of the good will always equal the marginal cost in the long run. Therefore, a greater quantity will be produced. We're going to explore later the reason that purely monopolistic firms are inefficient. Their price making power and the fact that the marginal revenue lies below the demand and the price of the good indicates that in the long run monopolistic firms will produce less output than would be produced in a similar competitive market. In addition, the firms are more likely to earn economic profits due to the high barriers to entry such as economies of scale enjoyed by firms in these markets. So this lesson was meant to introduce the concept of demand and marginal revenue for a purely monopolistic firm. What we need to see is that the marginal revenue lies below the demand curve, yet the demand curve is downward sloping due to the fact that the monopolistic firm is the only seller in this market. Therefore, the demand as seen by the firm is the market demand which, according to the law of demand, should always show an inverse relationship between the price of the product and the quantity that consumers are willing and able to pay.